Morning, McGraw. How the heck are you? I also heard that uh, you're a uh, you're a closet soccer fan. I, I I heard. Oh, I'm 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 out of the closet, baby. I'm wearing my uh, <laughs> my USA polo shirt today, ready for the big match tonight against uh, Ecuador. I'm uh, I'm worried about DeAndre Yedlin having to be on the bench, but excited uh, that we're gonna we're gonna advance to the semifinals in the Copa America. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you can hear him on uh, sports with uh, Jimmy Hewer later tonight. Big Five Fifty KTRS. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, Tony Messenger, um, what are we to make of the 15-hour filibuster in the Senate? It looks like Republicans are agreeing with Democrats that there needs to be some type of change in the gun laws. Well, you know, there has always been massive agreement in the overall public polls about a couple of things related to guns. There's, there's incredible bipartisan agreement that there should be universal background checks. There's incredible bipartisan agreement that you should get rid of the, the gun hole loophole. And there's pretty good bipartisan agreement that there should be some sort of assault weapons ban. We talked about this on Tuesday. There has been one uh, in place in this country previously, and it would have continued except for there was a sunset on it and, and, and Congress wouldn't take a vote on it. So I think there is a tremendous opportunity here when you look at the number of mass shootings that have, that have uh, in which the perpetrator has used a version of an AR-15, which is a weapon of war, which soldiers and generals and cops all say doesn't belong on the street. And so there's, there's, there's tremendous opportunity to do something there that is at least one step in the right direction and one step in showing that this country can come together on matters of bipartisan agreement that everything doesn't have to be division. Okay, so why are Republicans and the NRA signaling that they might be open to this now when they weren't open to it in the past? Well, they're going to say they were open to it previously, but what this ultimately shows is that the NRA position hasn't been about the Second Amendment. It hasn't been about guns. It's been about pure partisanship. The NRA exists as an arm of the Republican Party for the most part, and that's what this debate has been about over the last few years. And now the NRA has backed itself into a corner in which it has endorsed a candidate who changes his position by the hour. And they're in a position where they don't know what to do because Donald Trump says, hey, you know, my... Maybe we can get rid of those assault weapons. Now, he'll probably change his mind tomorrow, and it just, you know, it sort of goes with the wind. But their presidential candidate that they've endorsed is fine with an assault weapons ban. So guess what? All of a sudden, the NRA is going to be fine with it, too. So you're saying that with all of these moving parts, Donald Trump is so powerful within the Republican Party and within the NRA and within his supporters that if he decides to wake up one day and says, we need an assault weapons ban, everybody else falls in line? No, I'm not saying that Donald Trump is that powerful. I'm saying that the Republican love of party is greater than any principle that they claim to uphold right now. And right now, their love of party says, no matter how crazy he is, no matter what he believes in, Donald Trump is our Republican candidate. And so that's the horse they're going to ride. And if that horse says the sky is green tomorrow, then they're going to find a way to say the sky is green also. Do you think that there's a legitimate shot at getting something changed before the election? Uh, I, I wouldn't bet on it before the election um, because I think the – the Republicans hate President Obama more than they love the NRA. Um, but it's going to happen at some point. At some point, the nation's angry right now. I was on Twitter last night. I, I, I asked my followers at Tony Mess to share with me, give me one idea, one idea for gun control. What's, what's one thing you want to see happen? And all kinds of 
you know, really great ideas, some of which have nothing to do with gun control and have to do with campaign finance and all that. But here was the thing that really interested me. My brother, who is not all that interested in politics, he lives in Indiana, he works in the sports field. My brother weighed in, and my brother is now engaged on Twitter with an argument with some of my trolls, which is really interesting. <laughs> I need to get on there. I need to, wa- I need to warn him. But, but my brother doesn't talk politics. We don't talk politics in our family because I'm the only one in the family who's particularly involved in that field professionally. And he's not interested in politics. And he's not particularly a, a Democrat. And he's angry. I mean mad. He was texting me at 11 o'clock at night last night over how angry this issue makes him that the NRA stands in the way of, of some common sense stuff that have no Second Amendment implications whatsoever. And when people like my brother, who don't care particularly about politics, are angry over an issue, that tells me that we can get somewhere. Now, I felt this way after Newtown, too. Um, but, but, but now we're angry again in a similar fashion, not all that long afterward. I, 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 I'm an eternal optimist. I have to believe that this might be the opportunity where we, we actually make some progress and pass something common sense that moves our nation forward. That's Tony Messenger, St. Louis Post-Dispatch columnist. He joins us every Tuesday and Thursday. And is your favorite music English beat? That's your, that's your song of choice? No, but it's nostalgic. It's nostalgic for a couple of reasons. Number one, that was my theme music when I had a radio show in, in Columbia at KFRU AM. Yes. Um, and it's the scene in Gross Point Blank when that song plays, John Cusack, who is an assassin, kills another assassin with a pen. There's something metaphorical about what I do for a living that makes me like that song. Now you want to ban pens, I guess, right? You want to ban assault pens now because they're killing people with pens. <laughs> See, that was a joke. See only, what I did there? <laughs> pens don't kill people. Only people with pens kill people. Please Tony, Tony Messenger, St. Louis Post-Dispatch columnist. Have a good week, Tony. Thanks, McGraw. You too. Go USA. Go USA. There you go. 826, ladies and gentlemen. 826. Big 550. K-